Trucker Dump for August 26, 2009, episode 24. Friendly Truckers Haven't Vanished. Welcome to Trucker Dump, where you'll get one driver's insights and sometimes humorous views of truck driving and the trucking industry, and pretty much anything else he feels like dumping on you. This podcast is brought to you by AboutTruckDriving.com. Resources to help you understand the world of truck driving through the use of stories and a pathetic attempt at humor. Hello there, Todd McCann here. Today's topic is talked about by someone every day in the trucking industry. Today is my day. I called it Friendly Truckers Haven't Vanished. Once again, another profound, well thought out title. Oh well, onward. Many older truckers have fond memories of the way truckers used to help each other. They say that all the truckers nowadays only care about themselves. They also say that selfish drivers are causing truckers to have less of a community. Well, I'd say that they're partly right, but I'm too concerned with myself to care about anyone else's opinions. Hitting. The biggest complaint I've heard is that, back in the day, you'd never see a broken down truck on the shoulder without another driver who has stopped to check on him. That's true. I rarely see two trucks pulled over together anymore. But why is that? I'll admit something here. I never check on a stranded truck anymore. The only time I do is when it's 20 degrees outside and someone's life might be at risk. But by and large, I don't stop. Back in the day, I tried to be a good citizen. I rarely stopped but nearly always contacted the broken down truck via CB radio. Over the course of my 12-year driving career, in every single case, the driver had either contacted someone for help via their in-truck satellite system, their cell phone, or both. So the fact is that with modern-day technology, the need to stop and help has been rendered unnecessary. Furthermore, I don't even bother contacting them by CB anymore. I figured that everyone in the gerbil has a cell phone these days. As for the lack of community, well, phooey on that. Walk into any truck stop restaurant or driver's lounge and you'll witness plenty of community. Drivers still tell stories to each other like they always have. They talk across tables as they eat. Even further out of sight is the myriad of truckers that have taken the community online. There are trucking websites, trucking blogs, trucking forums, and social websites such as Facebook and Twitter, just to name a couple. Even more convenient is that all these websites can now be accessed through a smartphone. No computer required. Many of these truckers talk back and forth online like they've known each other for years. Maybe they have. It's just that they met online. The fact is they probably never met face to face. But does that matter anymore? The point is that, like every other industry, trucking is being affected by technology. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is up to the individual. Sure, there's nothing like quality FaceTime with real-life people. But I'd be willing to bet that some of these old-timers who complain the most could actually be more involved with the trucking community if they'd trade in their dial phone and typewriter for an iPhone and a laptop. Hey, yo, bud! Where do you want this load of feedback? Well, 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 what do you know? Finally getting some comments from some people who aren't family members. I have gotten a few in the past from other people, but uh, not enough to really uh, put on here. I had a couple of good ones on the last one, uh, Too Stupid to Fuel. Quite honestly, I'm a little surprised I didn't get one about the truckers, the perverts, and the naked people. I didn't get more comments on that one, but I did get a couple on Too Stupid to Fuel, so we'll read those. Kathy Hagel says, LOL, the good old Oregon gas pumping law. What was once there to protect the citizens of Oregon now is to protect the government, as it makes for an easy way to make jobs for people. Don't go trying to pump it yourself. That gas guy saved you from a very hefty fine. And if you try to do it yourself, both the gas station and you will get a ticket for doing so. As for truck drivers, make sure you have the right paperwork in the cab with you, as they will check to see if you're legal and knowledgeable to pump the fuel. Since I live here, Andrew, that's her husband, has had to get his paperwork. And we had to have it faxed to me, and I had to fax him a copy so he could come home when he got the Kenworth he drives now. So we as a family know all too well about the Oregon law, as per the norm with any Oregon law. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, what can you expect? This is the Socialist Republic of Oregon we're speaking of here. (laughs) 
<laughs> Kathy, that's funny. Socialist Republic of Oregon. Enough said about that. Christy Coupler, or Coupler, I think it's Coupler. I'm from New Jersey and have never pumped my own fuel unless I was in a hurry and too impatient to wait for the fuel attendant. On my way down to North Carolina last May, I stopped for fuel somewhere in Virginia. I sat in my little pickup and patiently awaited the fuel attendant to come over and service me. Well, about five minutes went by and here I am in my truck with lousy air conditioning and four yowling puking cats and carriers. <laughs> I looked around and saw a man in a blue uniform, so I got out and asked him how much longer it would be before he could get to my car. He started laughing, and then I noticed a patch on his sleeve. He was a cop. <laughs> I didn't see a gun, however, she says. He explained that they pumped their own fuel in Virginia. I was aghast. Personally, I don't think anyone but qualified attendants should fuel our cars. It's what they do for a living, so they are eminently qualified to do it. Whereas me, on the other hand, forgets to put her fuel cap back on before she drives away. Plus, I hate getting dirty and fuel on me, and the fumes give me a headache. Guess as a Yankee, I'm just spoiled, eh? Oh, and Pennsylvania had fuel attendants, and they pushed for the pump your own, claiming it would bring the cost of fuel down. What a crock. I paid more for gas in Pennsylvania and got my hands dirty to boot. Blah. Oh, and another thing. Not only did we get our fuel tanks filled, we got our oil checked and our windshield washed. Yes, I'm used to star treatment, and frankly, I miss it. Well, Christy... It would be nice to have the option of full service if you wanted it. I just think it's nuts to force it on you. But hey, each to their own. So there's my first couple of real comments. Uh, hope you guys start writing in more in the future so I can have some more to read to you. And how can you do that? Well, here's all the information coming up. <laughs> So what do you think? Have truckers lost their sense of community? Leave your comments over on the website so everyone can see. Go to abouttruckdriving.com and type TD24 into the search bar. If you prefer, you can email me at truckerdump at gmail.com or holler at me on Twitter where I'm at Todd McCain. That's two D's, two C's, and two N's. Be a good chap, or alas, and subscribe to the podcast on the website or over on iTunes. And since iTunes really digs reviews, appreciate it if you'd leave one. Constructive criticism is welcome. Boy, I just opened up a can of worms. <laughs> well, thanks for listening. So until next time, drive safe and stay out of my way. <laughs>